Hi there, during this session I'm going to be talking about the wave phenomena of diffraction, specifically single slit diffraction. Now what single slit diffraction is, is the interference of a source of light with itself. In this case it's a light coming from a one single slit. I've got two examples of what this light would look like if it was projected onto a screen. The top example in green shows what happens when you have monochromatic, so single wavelength light, in this case, reflecting green. And what we can see is, rather than just having a single slit uh, projected onto the screen in front of us, we get a pattern of, uh, of what are known as fringes as I go out. So we have a, a central peak of uh, high intensity, and then we have a darkened area, and then we have a, another fringe, then a darkened area, fringe, darkened area, fringe. And this process repeats on both sides. And it comes out due to, as we're going to see later on, uh, the interference of light from one side of the slit to the other side of the slit. Now, the diagram below shows this happening with white light. And the reason it's interesting is because you can see that um, we get a color distinction taking place as we move away from the central slit. And the reason we get that color distinction is because uh, this rule is wavelength dependent. Okay, so depending on the wavelength depends on the uh, the diffraction or the location of diffraction, crucially. crucially. So uh, let's think about this. Uh, a little bit more visually about what's actually happening here. So what I have is I have a single light source and this source is projecting towards a slit. Now this slit produces uh, monochromatic light. Perfect. Now as we know from the idea of uh, Huygens principle, at every single point in this slit we get a wavelet, so we get light being projected in a circular motion. And what happens is if we take this light and allow it to project out to a screen at a set distance away, we get situations of having both constructive interference, that we get the bright areas, and we get destructive interference where we get the dark areas. Uh, a really important graph which you're going to have to be able to produce would be the angle away from the center and the intensity distribution curve. So this curve on the far right hand side is something that you're going to have to reproduce. Now what this shows is that bright central area and then it shows how the intensity dips away as we see fringes and this carries on further and further. The further out the fringes are the less the intensity until we can't make out these at all. Starting over, the distance between uh, the edge of the slit and position Y is seen to be that of one wavelength. Okay. The distance between uh, Y and point P is equal to the distance between the other edge of the slit and point P. Now you may be thinking that seems strange. If it's one wavelength difference, surely that would cause them to be constructive interference. However, we've got to remember about all of the other light which is reaching this point. And as it turns out, if we have this situation, the average difference, so in the center here, um, is actually only half a wavelength. And if it's half a wavelength difference, that causes destructive interference. Now, if I look at the angles here, um, as it happens, my first angle, angle theta 1, is equal to the distance, oh, wavelength of the light divided by B. This is given by IB, so this is the standard statement. Now, as it happens, uh, angle 2 is equal to, or oh, using a small angle approximation, is equal to uh, F divided by D. F is the distance between the slit and the screen divided by D. Now as it happens, angle 1 and angle 2, due to small angle uh, approximation, can be considered to be the same value, which is why I haven't got 1 and 2 subscripts on these two features. Now that means that you can therefore work out that the distance between the central 
maximum and the first minimum should be equal to uh, the multiplication of the distance to the screen multiplied by the wavelength of the light divided by the width of the slit. Now you're not given this by the IB. You're given the earlier value, so you always have to think about that, and you'd have to explain it potentially using a diagram. Okay. So let's put this into practice. I've got an example question here. Light from a laser is used to form a single slit diffraction pattern. The width of the slit is 0 0.1 millimeters, and the screen is 3 uh, meters away from the slit. The width of the central maximum is measured to be 2.6 centimeters. What is the wavelength for the laser? So take a moment. Try and answer this question. Now I'm going to show you the solution. The answer goes, since the screen is a long way away from the slit, we can use small angle approximation to recognize that D equals uh, F multiplied by the wavelength divided by B. Okay. Uh, this means that uh, F is the distance from the slit to the screen. That's going to be 3 meters. Uh, the half width of the center maximum is going to be 1.3 centimeters so that's going to be the value d the distance from the middle to the first minimum therefore we can get put in the values uh, or work out what the wavelength is from known values which we've been given so we know what d is we know what uh, sorry b is going to be uh, we know what the value for b is we know the value for d is we know what the value for wavelength for, uh, for F is so if I put all these numbers in, I get 430 nanometers, which is the wavelength of the light which produced this situation. Okay. Hopefully, uh, that's pretty much the example question which is going to come up in any exam. So as long as you're confident with explaining what's happening, showing this diagrammatically, and answer any questions, you shouldn't have any problems with this in the future.